Don't skip this intro. This is going to help you more than you know. Hello everyone and welcome to Cricketing with Delanda. It's me again, Delanda. And thank you so much for joining me today. In today's tutorial, we will be looking at the sublimation DTF hack that is trending right now. Now, if you've been following me for any length of time, you probably already noticed that I really don't like to follow trends. I have enough ideas in my head already than to be focused on what someone else is doing. I like to really just get into the meat and potatoes of teaching how to use Cricut Design Space, but this tutorial is being done by special request. Okay. If you already know how to do basic sublimation, you know that sublimation is intended for use on polyester fabric. Have I tried sublimation on polyester? Yes. Do I love it? Also, yes. Have I tried other ways to sublimate because I don't prefer to wear white? Yes. There are multiple ways to sublimate on cotton and there are lots and lots of people who are interested in learning about all the different ways. If you already have a way to sublimate on cotton that works for you, don't feel the need to try this process. But if you're just interested because it looks interesting to you or you want to try a different way or you haven't tried a different way, you might want to try this. I've seen this successfully done on multiple channels. I've seen it done on design bundles. I've seen it with craftable things. And I've also seen it successfully with making with Marilyn. Now they have all done this process in a way that works best for them. Their process did not work for me, but I'm going to do it the way that works best for me. So if you try it this way and it doesn't work for you, you might also consider looking at their channels to see how they did it and try and see to see if the one of those ways will work best for you. Let me show you some examples of just different sublimation that I've tried. So this is just regular sublimation on, I think it's 95% polyester. This is a Cricut brand shirt. This is regular sublimation. The ink is vibrant, it's in the fabric. So I'm not gonna ever be worried about how many times I can wash it. The, the ink will probably outlast the fabric, okay? So regular sublimation, white polyester. This is sublimation on glitter vinyl. So this will be considered as a hack because I'm sublimating on cotton Basically, I'm sublimating on the glitter vinyl in order to use the vibrant image on a cotton, on cotton fabric. So I did this one a while ago. I'll make sure this tutorial is linked below. This is also not my preferred method because the glitter vinyl, in my opinion, feels very, very thick. Do the colors look vibrant? Yes. However, I just don't like the thickness of it, okay? But this is one way. You can also sublimate on clear HTV. This is my process. This is one of the shirts that I did with sublimation on clear HTV. As you can see, the color is vibrant. I have washed this shirt multiple times. I've provided wash updates. Um, I did this a few months ago. It's still, you know, ink. The ink is there. The color is vibrant. It stretches nicely. This is my preferred method of sublimating on cotton with dark fabrics. Now, let's talk about the cost. When I purchased the materials that I needed to do this process, the shirt that I'm wearing is an example of sublimation, the sublimation DTF hack with the powder. Okay, so let me just say, the powder that I purchased is this one right here. I paid $28.99 for this on Amazon. And in addition to this powder, you will also need DTF transfer film. This is the one that I purchased. It's 25 sheets in this package. This package cost um, $14.99. So if you put the $28.99 with the $14.99 all together, this is approximately $45. In my opinion, that's costly. Matter of personal preference. Now, did I have to purchase this brand of powder? No. Did I have to purchase this brand of paper? Also, no. But this is what I purchased. You can look online for yourself. Do research for yourself and see if you can find it, you know, less expensive and that will work for you. The clear sublimation HTV that I prefer is this one by HTV Runt. I have gotten excellent results from this. I, I love it. I love this stuff. This one costs $9.99 and it is five feet long. The roll is five feet. So 
I mean, just doing cost comparisons, this will be my, this is probably going to be my preferred method. Now, um, I just want to be honest with you about this full process. I'm going to demonstrate it because once again, I'm doing this to fulfill multiple requests, um, but it won't be my go-to method. So you probably won't see this on my channel a lot. All right. So at any time, if you find any of this information helpful for you, please consider liking the video, subscribing to my channel and turning on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content every single week. Now, without further ado, we're going to look at the materials. I'm going to show you everything. I'm going to show you how I got the DTF transfer film to go through my printer, which was also a part of the headache with this process. Um, but I'm going to show you all of it. I want to be completely honest and transparent with you, as transparent as that paper. <laughs> okay. And we will get into all the things. Now you might be wondering, how does this wash? That's a question I know I'm going to get. I have not washed this yet. I did this about two or three days ago. I have not washed it yet, but once I do, I will provide wash updates. So without further ado, let's get started. The materials I'm going to use for this project include my HTV Runt Auto Heat Press. If you have this heat press and you are wondering, how do you turn it off? It's flashing. When this light is flashing, it's off, okay? I am using this powder that I purchased from Amazon. It'll be linked below. These DTF transfer film sheets. My ink is Hippo Sublimation Ink. I have two boxes here because I'm not sure what your, the box will look like when you get it, but I think this is what the newer box looks like. I'm using a 100% cotton gilding shirt. My parchment paper is just regular non-stick parchment paper. And I am using the Cricut brand of heat resistant tape. I'm not sure if you can see it, but I always use Cricut brand heat resistant tape. It's my preferred heat resistant tape. My printer is an Epson EcoTank 2760, which you will see once we get over to the printer. Okay, the image that I'm going to be using is one that I purchased from Design Bundles. Every single thing is linked below the video. This tray right here is just one of those lids that come on top of a foil pan. I prefer to use the lid instead of the pan because we don't ever use these lids anyway. Okay, so without further ado, let's head on over to the computer so that I can show you the file that I'm going to use. And I'm also going to show you how I'm going to get the file printed out. I am on the designbundles.net website, and this is the bundle that I purchased in order to use for this project. And this one is just called the 10 Christmas Gnome Bundle. I will definitely have it linked below this video. This file, this bundle right now is $2.40. So you'll just need to, you know, click on the link below and then download it. The file that I'm using is this one right here that says Christmas with my Nomies. But I also like this one that says chilling with my Nomies. So I might just try it again and see if I like that one better. But you have 10 options with this bundle. This is the one that I'm using. Let me show you now how, how I am going to use this file in Microsoft Word. I am in Microsoft Word and I'm looking at a blank document. The first thing I'm going to do is go to layout right here at the top and I'm going to change the orientation from portrait to landscape. The next thing I'm going to do is just stretch out my margins by just dragging them all the way over at the, on the top left and right and on the sides, the top and the bottom. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is I am going to change the size of my paper. The DTF transfer film that I'm using is not eight and a half by 11. It's actually considered the size that is called A4. So that's 8.27 by 11.69. So it's important to know that because you're not using eight and a half by 11 if you're purchasing the same ones that I'm using. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click insert and I'm going to insert the GNOME file that I just downloaded from Design Bundles. I'm going to click insert picture from this device 
and I have mine saved in a folder already and I just call it the blue gnome Christmas file and I will I think I want to do a different one I want to do this one right here chilling with my ch chilling with my gnomies I'm gonna click insert and you see the file comes in really big but I know that I'm in a safe zone because I have resized my paper and these gnomes fit on here nicely now I can make this a little bit wider if I want to because I still have all of this space over here or I can just right click on this click wrap text and choose tight and then I can you know move the the image to the middle of the paper I think I want to make this a little bit wider so I'm going to click on the width and just make it a little bit wider okay and then before I print this I'm definitely going to double check that um, none of my images cut off and that I don't run the risk of having you know my image not not printing fully okay all right so I think I like the way this looks and so now let me do a I'm going to go to file I'm going to go to print I am printing from my Epson EcoTank 2760 I am going to uh, click printer properties and my page my document size is that A4 which is remember is the 8.2 so I'm going to keep it right there I changed my paper type to photo paper glossy the quality is high now this will not look the same for you if you're not using the same printer okay so just know that on my more options I do have my image mirrored okay so I do have that checked I do not have high speed checked I don't want it to be on high speed let me go back to main double check okay I think that is exactly how I want it okay I'm not making any changes right there I am going to click OK and when I click print right here it's going to show me a print preview but I'm looking down here I can already see that some of my images cut off I can already tell just by looking down here at the bottom of my screen so let me click print anyway okay so I am ready to click print let's go on over to the printer and we will be back on the camera together now before I print this there are a few things I want you to know I think it's important to have your powder your tray whatever you're gonna you know put the powder in and your paper ready I think it's also important to have the tray out that will catch the paper because when the Paper, when the film goes through your printer and it comes out, it's going to be wet. And if this is not already ready here to catch it, you might drop it and then the image is already damaged. So have that already ready, have everything ready to go. So as soon as it comes out of the printer, you can start to pour the powder on. Now let's continue. I have taken my printer completely off the shelf to show you how I got this to work for me. The taping method, like taping a sheet of film to the paper with the painter's tape, didn't work for me. Taping painter's tape to the back of the film also didn't work for me. You know, if you've been following me, that I don't keep any paper in my printer. So, and I was determined to get this to work because once again, it was a request. What I did, what I tried that finally worked for me was I stacked my paper tray with paper i filled it up completely so if you look this is a stack of just regular copy paper i stacked it in here in the back and then i got a sheet of the dtf transfer film now this film is hard to tell which side is the right side and on the package it says all print sides are placed uniformly facing up so I, when i take it out of the package I just kept it face up. That's the only way for me to know which side was the right side um, because that's also a source of struggle with this stuff because when it comes out, it's hard to tell. So I just left it face up and I just put it in my printer in the back just like this. Okay, and then now I'm going to click print and we will see how it goes. So once it starts, I was also holding it to make sure that it was going to go through.
So here's my printed image. I don't have any roller marks. This is what works for me. I already have my heat press heating up to 385 degrees. I'm going to sprinkle this powder all over this image. The ink is wet. Now, some people do it lightly. Some people do a heavy amount. I, when I did this, I did a heavy amount. And I don't know if that's right or wrong, but it worked for me. Sprinkling a lot. Now, one thing I will say about this powder is that, you know, it did cost $28, but, um, you know, whatever is not used, whatever is not stuck to the image, it goes back into the container. So I do think the container will last a while, um, but I still feel like just more steps. Okay, so now that it's on there, kind of just pick it up and make sure that it's on there really good. Just shake it, shake it, shake it, don't break it. Did y'all say that when y'all growing up? Shake it. Shake it like a Polaroid picture. Okay. I feel like it's on there. Shake it out. Um, now, you see how light it is. It's not vibrant. It's still vibrant, but not as vibrant as it's going to be. So now what I'm going to do is put this on the heat plate and just let it heat up for about a minute. The temperature that I'm using is 385 degrees, and I'm not going to um, press it just yet. I'm just going to let it sit on the plate for about a minute. Let's go over to the heat press. All right, my heat press is heated up to 385. I'm going to place the image with the powder side up just on the plate. And I'll just let it sit there for about a minute. I'm not going to lower the plate. If you have this exact heat press, just make sure you don't have it on the auto mode. It powers off if you don't use it right away. So I'm just turning it back on. Um, make sure you don't have it on auto because other if you do, it'll press down. You don't want that. I just have it raised up. So it's just hovering over the image and you can see it getting darker already. Now I'm going to remove it. You can see how dark it is. You can see how much darker it is than it was before. I'm just gonna put it to the side for a second at that that is amazing amazing okay now i have my gray shirt and this shirt is a gildan heavy cotton large and i am going to do a crease just fold it in half to do a crease and i'm just um just do a quick little crease on it Okay, there's my crease down the middle. So I'm going to place this face down on the shirt. Three finger lengths down. Just like that. And I am going to use, you know, heat resistant tape on both sides. Put one over here. And one over here just to keep it in place. And I am going to cover mine with parchment paper. And I want to press this 385 for 40 seconds. Let's see. So I'm going to pull it out. And I can remove the parchment paper. The parchment paper doesn't have anything on it. So this is completely reusable. And the recommendation from the materials that I purchased is to do a cool peel. I prefer to do a warm peel. 
So I'm not going to let it cool down completely. I am going to let it cool down a little bit. So I just, I'm going to take it from my um, heat plate. And I'm going to just fan it a little bit. Not removing it yet. There is no butcher paper inside the shirt. I don't, I didn't have to use butcher paper with this. So that's a benefit also. But you know, with regular sublimation, I would have needed butcher paper to protect the my heat plate, my heat press from getting any ink. So there is no butcher paper inside the shirt either. And we'll look at the inside of the shirt. All right, I am going to peel it and reveal it. Here we go. Here we go. And it looks really, really good. Look at that. Look how vibrant this is. Look at that. I love it. I love it. I knew I loved it when it came off the heat plate. I already knew that, but I really, really do love it. It's soft. Let me show you up close. Um, it looks, it's super vibrant. It looks really, really nice. This is a stretch. So I'm stretching it. It stretches nicely. If I turn it inside out, there's nothing inside the shirt. You can see the, make sure you can see the design. See the gnomes, they're right there. So this is the finished product. And hopefully you found this helpful. Please leave me a comment below and let me know if you learned anything and if you found this helpful. If you did, please consider liking the video, subscribing to my channel and turning on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content every single week. Thank you so much for joining me today and Thanks for watching. Bye.